This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, here's Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. What is good? BYU Sports Nation is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, August 10th. Let's go. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with a guy who... Like me at midnight was watching the Mariners take down the Yankees in an epic game. He is Jason Shepard. I did. I stayed up uh, all night. How about that? I stayed up 13 innings. A walk off in the bottom of the 13. At your age, that's quite significant. I don't know. We're the same age. Uh, <laughs> here's what I didn't tell you about that scenario. Yeah. I was pulling for the Yankees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you also pulled for the Empire in uh, Star Wars. I do. I do not have a problem pulling for the Yankees. I was actually. I was actually uh, rooting for the Yankees in the game. It's fine. It's not why? that I hate the Mariners. Well, why? Why I, would I you root for the I Yankees? They uh, they win plenty. They don't need you. Well, here's the other thing. Uh, my Cardinals had just swept the Yankees, so I'm like, okay. You want like so, strength of schedule? No, no, it's you not want strength the, of schedule. But you I want the Ken Palm I do not higher? have a problem rooting for the Yankees or Alabama or like. I happen to like Nick Saban, mm. um, so that's so I, that's I was pulling for the Yankees. What are we supposed last to do night? about this yes. guy? So good you know. gosh, it's me, it's me. Had I known that, we would have not done that for the. Yankees. And Nick okay. Saban looks like my dad, so that's kind that of that could be a good or a bad thing yeah. depending on the relationship. It really does. I think the There's a resemblance fine, to my dad. It's kind of weird. Okay, well. That went very different than I thought it would. We hope the BYU football uh, season does not. We hope it goes like we think it will be. Okay, here's the show lineup. Schedule superlatives. Best road game, trap game, statement game, and much more. Shep's uh, Yankees pro opinions coming up. <laughs> Dave McCann gives his answer to those. And what has surprised him about fall camp so far, if anything at all? Which BYU player is trying to add 50 pounds after a mission to his weight? And uh, the Vodka Twins from the soccer team are here. Our main goal is to distinguish who's who. Uh, between them, because we don't be, quite know. Are they going to be wearing their their uniform numbers? Probably not. Okay. Uh, ahead of tonight's alumni game and a big time exhibition game at North Carolina. How about that? Can you imagine BYU football playing an exhibition game against Alabama? That's what BYU is doing in women's soccer. But first, let's cook up some headlines. Fall camp continues with team photo day today. Several Cougars will likely be smiling as more preseason award watch lists were announced. Clark Barrington and Blake Freeland were named to the Lombardi Award watch list, given to the best offensive or defensive lineman. Also, Keanu Hill was named to the Earl Campbell watch list, and one of the qualifications for this, the award only involves players who are from the state of Texas, which obviously Keanu is. At photo day, I heard you're rooting for the photographers, not the players. That's crazy. <laughs> the first NFL depth charts are out. Zach Wilson, Sione Taki Taki, Fred Warner are starters on the Jets, Browns, and Niners, of course. Jason Hill is a co-first-string tight end starter for the Saints, while Jamal Williams, Dex Mill, and Tyler Algier all listed as backups, among others. BYU Women's Volleyball named Haley Rogers the new director of operations for the program. The Cougars will face Ryder on August 26th in the BYU Invitational at the Smith Fieldhouse. You can watch that on the BYU TV app. Is that, a, that Isaiah or J.R. Ryder? Which uh, version I, I'm going to say uh, J.R. Ryder. Yeah. Yeah, Minnesota uh, Timberwolves. Did JR right win the dunk contest? He or did. did Isaiah? No, it was JR. JR. Did earlier. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Did Akeem Olajuwon or Hakeem Olajuwon? Do you know the story behind that, by the way? Uh, Ak- I don't know the Akeem, story. Akeem, Akeem was his is, actual name. Correct. They kept mispronouncing it, so he so just, he just let him go it? with it. No, he just let him go with it. Really? <laughs> it's your name. Can you imagine Hakeem, Moose? Hakeem. Like, Tell it's us what you want. Moose. Uh, but <laughs> everyone used uh, the answer. Uh, women's soccer is holding an alumni game tonight at Southfield, 9 Eastern time, admissions free. It's not going to be on TV or radio, so if you want to go or see it, you got to show up. Cougars prepare, as mentioned, for North Carolina in Cary on Saturday. And how about some uh, Utah women's open results for you? Uh, Kirsten Fotu is tied for third, and Berlin Long, Leela Naliai, and Sun Bencio are tied for seventh place. Hey, nice job on the pronunciations. Women's golf is uh, making it harder and harder, which is fun. <laughs> we like a good challenge. Let's go. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. All right, it's August 10th, so it's time for Schedule Superlatives. Uh, where we slice up the schedule into parts, break it down. So we've got several categories. Let's walk through these and alternate uh, answers here. What's the best game on the 2022 football schedule in your opinion, Chip? For me right now, it's Baylor. And for many different reasons. Number one, 
it's an opportunity to face a Big 12 team, a team that you faced last hey, year. Hey, brother. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, and this game is at home. And I know a lot of people may want to say Notre Dame. And that's a, a quote-unquote neutral site game. We know that's probably not going to be the case. But the fact that you get Baylor at home, Baylor is going to be good again. I don't yep. think they're going to be as good as they were last year. That's the hope. But they, they ran for 300 they yards. They will certainly be good. But I love that matchup, and I just like the idea of an opportunity to face a team that beat you last year. You get not, not revenge. I don't know if there's those kind of feelings. because I, don't, I want to say it's, it's that type of situation. But to be able to get one back the last year of independence as you go into that conference. For me, the best game is Baylor. And quite frankly, it, I believe, has the, the line, I think, is the closest in terms of some of those bigger games. So it's expected to be a really, really good game. So that's why I go with the Baylor Bears. Baylor certainly doesn't, certainly doesn't have the tradition of an Oklahoma or a Texas or, or whatnot. But if I told you a Power 5 champ not named Utah is coming to Provo, yes. that's a huge game. Absolutely. So that, that's a great pick. I go with Notre Dame. Uh, seems Yeah, like... Um, the obvious angle, I guess, on this. You finally get that game. There's also this edge to this game because it's not in Provo. Right. I know that uh, the administration has said all the right things, which is great. I know they're competitive and want to win this game, obviously. But the fan base is still right up about this not being in Provo <laughs> and it being in Vegas. And, uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. And we're uh, excited to see what BYU wears in that game. But, yeah, best game on the schedule, Notre Dame. I think they'll be the highest-ranked team at that time. Uh, the BYU plays. I'm not sure when the season ends if Notre Dame will be the best team BYU will have played by ranking, perhaps. Yeah, it's certainly possible. I, I, look, honestly, when, I, when it's all said and done, I think if we were to ask this question, I think most people would fall on one of, I would say 80% of the answers would fall on either Baylor or Notre Dame. I think there I are, would say Oregon's Oregon probably going to be mix, an answer in the mix. But I, yeah. I still think between those two, I think you would get 80% of the vote. Notre Dame has a first-year head coach, Marcus Freeman. Baylor ha returns its coach in Dave Aranda, organize a new coach in Dan Lanning. So Baylor, for your side of this argument, certainly has uh, more continuity. Yes. But you do, uh, but does have a new quarterback, new running back, new set of receivers. Uh, so it's going to be a different Baylor. The return of Jeff Grimes. And Eric Mateos. The Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateos game, yes. What's up? They okay. ran for 300 yards on BYU. I'm not sure they're <laughs> going to get the same welcome as Bronco Mendenhall and the boys last year. Probably them. not. All right, we've gone from best game. How about the trap game? And I'm avoiding yep. saying that. Admiral Akbar. Ah, yeah, yeah, it's I was a trap. I was trying not to be that obvious <laughs> about it. But what's the trap game for you on the schedule? Okay, this one's sneaky to me. Typically, you, you talk about a game before a big game. I'm going a game after a big game. I'm going Arkansas. I think BYU is going to go so hard against Notre Dame. It's going to be tough to get up for Arkansas the next week. Is it? They're the N SEC team. What are you talking about? I think BYU is going to expel a lot of energy against Utah State on September 29th on a Thursday. Go down to Vegas October 8th, try and win perhaps the biggest game of the season, one of, right? And then Arkansas comes to town, just the second team and third game ever from the SEC in Provo. That is a huge game. It was a preseason top 25 team. They might be in the top 20 then. Third pick in the SEC West. That's a very good team out of the SEC. Physical game against Notre Dame. Physical game again against the Razorbacks. I'm actually going to go one week later for my answer, and I'm going to go with Liberty. And the reason I'm using Liberty is because the two previous games before, you have Notre Dame, you have Arkansas. There's obviously, and even, even if you want to extend it to Utah State, you have all of those games that you know BYU is going to be up for. Depending on how that, how that goes, and, and maybe even regardless of how that goes, you're not going to be looking at Liberty the same way you're going to be looking at an SEC team in Arkansas and Notre Dame. It's just, you're just, you just don't. So the fact that you have to go to Lynchburg and play Liberty, that's the one that I could easily see being a trap game. Now, make no mistake, I think BYU wins that game. Absolutely, BYU should win that game. But Liberty is a, is a good football team. They obviously had a quarterback that was drafted in this most Malik recent Willis. NFL draft. BYU will have played Liberty twice, but never faced yes. Malik Willis. They got, yes, they got lucky, though. It's true. Yeah. So for me, the, I go after you, you. You're up for Notre Dame. That's just massive. So much attention to that game. Then you have S, the NSCC team in Arkansas. And then, oh, and here's Liberty. Don't overlook Liberty. Even though I think BYU wins that game, don't overlook Liberty. And in Virginia, like East Coast, always tricky. Uh, rare is the time BYU goes to the East Coast and just blows out a fool, right? 2014 UConn sticks out. 
There are other UCF 2020 Boca Raton, but there are fewer instances of that. Look, it's hard it, to win, and it's hard to win big. USF sticks out. And watch that game too. be at like 10 a.m. Mountain. Oh my gosh! Because right now it's TBA. <laughs> Please no. It's it, <laughs> hopefully it's ESPNU in the late afternoon. Uh, that's that's like the best case scenario. Okay, best revenge game. Spencer and I discussed this a couple weeks ago. My answer has changed. What is yours? Um, well, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. I, I don't know if I necessarily when I think revenge game, I think of something. Like, it's nasty. and I, So I don't feel that BYU-Baylor is nasty. BYU does not play St. Mary's in football. When <laughs> that is yet. true. But I still, I'm still going with the Baylor game as a revenge game because really of what happened last year. Show. It's going to be a theme throughout all of these superlatives. It's going to be great. So I'm going with Baylor again because, look, not only do you want to get them back for, for losing to them last year, but I'll, I'll, I'll go again to the fact that you want to set a tone going into that conference next year. This is your opportunity yeah. to face a Big 12 team. You get them at home. It's your opportunity to show showcase BYU and Provo and give them a loss heading into conference play next year. I forgot about the onside kick in that game until we just showed that. <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, uh, I'll mix it up. A couple weeks ago, I said Baylor like you. I'm going Boise State because it's the last one you play because of how last year happened. That, that's a big-time revenge game. BYU's not going to play Boise State in a minute. More on that in a moment. Um, so this is, this is a big moment because these are two programs that liken themselves to each other, um, regional matchup. Guess what? Boise State has had more recent success than BYU. Granted, that was last decade. BYU's had more recent success, I guess, the last two years, right? Because this isn't the same Boise State program that it was. Like, it's not Chris Peterson and Kellen Moore anymore. That's Brett Ribbon. That's not... They're not that group. Although they do have the greatest quarterback in the history of college football, Hank Bachmeyer. Um, you know, that's going to be <laughs> – you didn't even laugh? We always make that joke. I thought you were on – That was my joke. I'm a little upset that you <laughs> took it. <laughs> Boise State. That's, that's going to be a huge revenge game. All right. How about the biggest statement game? I think this one's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Notre Dame. I, I just think it's hard to uh, have a game that, you know, nationally will make waves more than Notre Dame. Even if Notre Dame's – uh, good, but not great. Right. Like, we hope Notre Dame's walking in at least 4-1 and one into that game. I think they play a pretty tough schedule leading up. I'll look it up in a sec. But uh, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. It's NBC. It's, it's Fighting Irish. It's Rudy. It's the whole deal. Yeah, I, uh, I agree with you. I believe that it is Notre Dame. I think, and I agree with what you said earlier, it'll be the highest-ranked team BYU faces when they, when they play them. The fact that it, let's be honest, it's neutral site, but it's a road game. Yep. It's going to be a predominant Notre Dame fan base in attendance. Wait, and why? I, and, I, and I think it's going to, if you win that game, if you're BYU, I think you're going to get the most attention yes. by beating Notre Dame under those circumstances. Notre Dame's season opener is at Ohio State. How about that game? A preview of September 3rd. Conference games to come. Of Big Ten play because, no, no Notre Dame's going to stand up. Okay, uh, sorry, we're leaving Independence, Notre Dame. See you. Uh, they're like, you were independent? We didn't even know. Uh, toughest three-game stretch. This is an interesting question. Yeah, and you and I took different um, avenues on this one. I the way I look at it, the first three games, to me, it's the toughest stretch. It's the okay. toughest three-game stretch. Yeah. South Florida, Baylor, and Oregon. If for no other reason than what we've seen as an independent, everything about BYU's season hinges on the way the season starts. Because if you come out of the gate and, and lay an egg, it's, it sets you back for most of your goals the rest of the year. Yeah. And so you have the tough teams in Baylor and Oregon. You have to come out and set the tone week one against South Florida. And let's also, let's not forget the fact that it's a season opener. So you, right out of the gate, you've got to be ready to go. Everybody's going to be pumped. So I say the first three games are the toughest three-game stretch. I go Utah State, Notre Dame, Arkansas, and I'll see your USF, Baylor, Oregon, and raise you those three because BYU generally is going to get banged up a little bit. So you've got to show up in the middle of the season, too. Let's say BYU jumps out and is very successful at the beginning of the year, like you, like you mentioned. If, if you struggle through this stretch, you kind of blow up what you did at the beginning. Obviously, you just need to win as many games as possible. But I think at this point, when you go games four, five, six, this is a really important stretch where you're playing three good teams. Utah State finished top 25, returns Logan Bunner. Um, that, that's a good team. Are they picked to win the Mountain West? No. But that's a good team. They come to Provo. Interesting feelings with final game with Utah State, maybe in a minute. 
We'll see when we play them next. But there's no reason BYU should lose that game. <clears throat> right. It's just a big game, right? And it's Utah State Super Bowl, as we like to uh, mention. So that that's uh, that's a tough three game stretch. By the way, Cougar Stats yesterday said BYU's 21 and five in its last 26 um, season openers, and undefeated against G5s. Let's go. So BYU does well out of the gate. All right. Uh, this is one of your favorites. The favorite last time we are playing these guys in a while. Game. Game. Uh, Boise team. State. Yeah, yeah. I, I think there's just a lot there that, that seems pretty obvious. Last year, yep. the regional matchup, BYU's, uh, one win on the, on the uh, Smurf turf. Let's go. Yeah, and, and any excuse to show Matt Payne. <laughs> just wrecking fools. <laughs> any excuse we have Matt Payne. Yeah, let's go. There have been some classic matchups, right? Yeah, we agree on this again. Uh, Boise State is the answer. There's just so many things on both sides of this rivalry Absolutely. game that have been messed up because the other team beat them. You know what I mean? Well, plus, like, you've got the dynamic of, like, the members of the church who live in Boise who are Boise State fans. Right. Like, you have those, like, members of the church who are Utah fans against BYU. Look, I'm Boise never, State is yes, the other one. Yes, yes. Yeah. I am never going to miss a trip for BYU up to Boise. You won't miss it? Like, when they don't play? Like, like I, I, I want no part of that anymore. That has been just an <laughs> absolute good. nightmare for BYU historically up yes. there. So I, the fact that BYU doesn't have to go up there, they're fantastic they're up there. Not having to worry about that, I am all for it. Okay, best road trip. Uh, I, I'm going right to the beginning. I'm going South Florida, and it's number one. It's the season opener, so everybody's pumped. High, expectations are high, yep. but it's it's Tampa. It's Tampa, Florida. You're going to an NFL stadium. It's in Tampa. The weather's going to be awesome, and it's the season opener. That's the best. That's the best road trip to me. You could turn that into a Disney World Orlando deal too. You could what just, about a two two and a half hour drive? Maybe that, or not even bad. that. That's, uh, I th it might even be close. I don't know. Okay, I, I'm saying Oregon. I'm, my 503 bias is coming out because you can hit up Portland. Also, play, playing at Oregon is special. Like, that's one of the top venues in the country to go to. I would argue top uh, 15, top 20. They play Matt Kearney coming home with the Oregon High. It's a great song. Like, that's one where I'm, like, super bummed I'm not going to be able to go to that particular road game this year. Going to Autzen would be pretty cool. I've seen one game there. Real special. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. I've never been there. Uh, favorite TV time combo? Uh, Utah Tech live on BYU TV okay. so, so um, is, is my answer. Yeah, so yeah, so, so one one thirty uh, Mountain Time. Uh, They're I, in the afternoon again. Yes, they are in the afternoon again. Uh, also, the Oregon <laughs> game is in the afternoon, and that's one of the reasons I picked it. It's Oregon on Big Fox in the afternoon. Big Fox as match up as one match up <laughs> match up network and afternoon game. I don't know of another. T uh, it's happened, but I can't recall the last Pacific Time Zone day game BYU's played in. I mean, incredible. Okay. Last but not least, least interesting game. Look, we really don't need to spend a ton of time on this. It's Utah Tech. I think it's Idaho State, even though BYU doesn't play Idaho State. Um, no, it's Utah Tech. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but at that point of the season, we hope that BYU is cooking and, like, you know, 9-1 uh, and one at that That's, point. That is the uh, hope. And, like, well, the hope is 12th. more than that. Um, <laughs> Yes, the realistic goal is nine and one at that point, or, or and we or get to eight see and, two, and we get probably. to see the new voice yeah. of the Utah Tech Trailblazers, Rod Zundel. What? Calling Rod the Zundel's yes. the voice of the yes of the get to see Zippy Trailblazers for that game. Nice. Yes. Okay, but it all starts in how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. Twenty-four days. Twenty. We're a little after that somewhere. Okay, our question of the day. What's the biggest statement game on BYU's schedule this year? McCann's season? over here. He wishes he was singing with us. Next, next segment, we'll bring Dave in to sing. <laughs> Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Dirk Keeler sounds like an old newspaper writer on Instagram. Baylor sets the bar for the entire season and shows that BYU can beat the projected Big 12 champs. That's part of your argument. Yes, absolutely. Set the tone. you got to set the tone going into the new conference. Steven Notham on Twitter. Oregon. Austin is a legendary venue. Oregon's one of the most dominant teams on the West Coast. Also games that the seasons start, create momentum. Beating the Ducks sets up a beautiful position for BYU. Plus, it's on Fox during the day. All eyes will be in on this game. Plus, BYU has to avenge the, uh, what year was it? Was it, was it 91? When BYU went there, 89, when BYU went to Oregon and lost with yeah, Ty Emmer. Yeah, I can't remember the exact year. It's a revenge game without knowing it. But the, got, BYU got sort go of there. got the revenge in the bowl game. Oh, yes, they did. Yes, they in did. In 2006. Yes, but, yeah, go back did. to Austin and win that game. All right, coming up, what's the oddest thing we've ever seen on a baseball diamond? Based on something that happened in the big last night. And Dave McCann joins us. We'll hear his uh, favorite song, plus uh, his biggest trap game on the schedule. This is BYU Sports.
Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. There's nothing quite like doing a live sketch. Having the audience like nearby is really, really neat to just be able to connect with them and hopefully make their day better. When you are doing a sketch and you hear your first laugh, it's just like, here we go. Let's go for it. I mean, one of the most rewarding things is having people saying, like, I, I struggle with this or this, and you guys are able to make me laugh at it and realize, like, I'm not the only person going through those things. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Check out the latest episode of After Further Review anytime on demand on the BYU TV app. Okay, so the Oregon game we were talking about, it's 1990, BYU loses at 32-16. BYU is ranked fourth in the country in 1990, walking into Austin. Now BYU returns this year, trying to pay the favor back. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. We're live in Studio B, your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem Jordan, Jason Shepard. Dave McCann now joins us on set as we talk about his schedule superlatives. And, of course, after further review continues, you can catch it on demand, as we just mentioned. Great show last night. We focused on a lot of the defensive backs and the D-line, and it feels like there's like 30 in both groups. <laughs> uh, we got done. We're like, I think we're going to be all right on defense. We didn't even talk about the linebackers, and that's coming up. But, uh, yeah, BYU TV app is sitting there waiting for you, and it's a fun hour. Okay, let's talk about some of those schedule superlatives. Walk through what you think. Okay, best game on the schedule. Notre Dame. It's the best game for all those reasons that the two of you just spent a few minutes talking about. It, it, it's going to be awesome. It is going to be the awesome. The Golden Domers. Let's yes. go. Yeah. Uh, trap game. Which one, which one do you worry about that? South Florida. Okay. The first game. The first game because, uh, because of the way the season is. There are some huge games in the season. There's a lot of expectation for returning players, for Jaron Hall to have a, a great year against those big names. It's been a long time since BYU went back there and got beat. So with the exception of Jerem, I don't know if there's a fire of going back there and rectifying it. They beat him last year here. I just have a feeling that, you know, it's the first game, and the first game can spoil a lot of things, yep. um, especially with Baylor looming the following week and then Oregon after that. I can't remember if a line's out for that, but I would imagine it's like 10 or 11. Uh, Spencer feels like, hey, that game's going to be closer than we think. Do yeah. you feel the same way? I think they, they've got a lot of transfers in. You know, the Baylor quarterback played well against BYU last year, and now he's their quarterback. I don't know what that means. Their speedy runner, McLean, was fantastic. Oh, dollar store Michael Vick. Yeah. Like, he yeah. was unbelievable. So I don't yeah. know how they're going to work those two. Maybe they play both of them. Um, but it's on the East Coast. It's, it's uh, so much riding on it because there's so many yes. bigger things yes. after it. Well, see, or the but, history. Well, yeah, but here, BYU here's the way I look game, at it. Yeah. We all know how good this team should be this year. I think if they're, if they're as good as we think they are, they should be able to hit the ground running. That's yeah. what gives me hope that they come out and they're actually able to do what we think they're capable of doing in game one because of so much production back. So many of those players that got time last year back, they shouldn't have to go through growing pains because they've all been together for right. the most part. Shouldn't. Shouldn't. Shouldn't, but openers are funny yes. sometimes. Openers are weird. It is true. I, I, and I always argue, why does game one have to be slow? 2001 wasn't. 
Right. You put up 70. <laughs> Tulane stunk. Doesn't stop Florida. It's like Florida. a thousand degrees Stink. in that game. Like, yeah, it was so hot. Yeah. Uh, just come out and put up a 70 spot and uh, let's go. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, all we ask. <laughs> that's, that's it. We don't ask much. Uh, revenge. Oh, statement game. I think Baylor's the statement game. I know that you guys were talking about Notre Dame. I think Baylor for where BYU is going. They got beat there last year in Waco. It doesn't make it a revenge game. It makes it a statement game, I think, for BYU because they got them at home instead of over there. They join the league next year, national TV, just like just like the others. There'll be a lot of hype around this one, too. Baylor's, what, number 10 in the coaches' poll, although that poll is completely jacked. We'll see where they are yeah. in the AP. Yeah. But I think that's the statement game of BYU saying, hey, you know what, Baylor, Baylor, Baylor was the best team last year. BYU is eye-to-eye -eye with them this year, and we'll see them eye-to-eye -eye next year in their league. I love the 83-84 vibes of this, though where 83, BYU's only loss is there. BYU pounds them at home in 84. BYU got, got worked in that game. That's the only game BYU was out-muscled, right? Yeah. Um, sometime, then they come back to Pro for the home opener. Sometime you should ask Steve Young about that, Baylor. <laughs> we have too much, <laughs> to the point where he's bugged I when know we it. bring it up. Uh, sometimes that should just come up. Yeah. So you said, uh, you said the Baylor game's not a revenge game. What is your revenge game? I'm Boise State. By nature, BYU overlooked Boise State last year. Uh, it was the only game I think they had multiple fumbles all season. Um, and those fumbles turned into Boise State points yep. all in a matter of minutes in the first half. Um, that was a bad game for BYU. It was cold. It was rainy. Uh, BYU had Baylor the next week. They're what? Under, what were they? Tenth and tenth, five tenth and oh. the country and five and oh. Yeah. So they're thinking the showdowns with Baylor. Um, and, and Boise State came in and outplayed them. And I think that makes this a, a revenge game. And I love this sort of, hey, we don't know if BYU is going to play Boise State again, yeah. Yeah. ever. Um, so this is a, a big-time match. And on the blue. That's, I mean, that's it. That's my revenge game. Yeah. Okay. Okay, toughest three-game stretch. Well, I'm going with the first three. Uh, but there's two really tough three-game stretches, and you talked about both of them. But I think South Florida on the East Coast, and then you come here for Baylor, Prime time at night should be a top 25 matchup. Are you going to mention it, a flyover or not on that? Are we going to have a flyover? Oh, there will be a flyover. Yes. The F-15s are Come over on, baby. For the Baylor game. That's <laughs> going to be such a night. The place will be packed. That's why South Florida is so big. Get through South Florida, even if you beat them by a point, because the 10th is so big here in Provo for all of the reasons of the here and now and, and the future. And then over to Oregon. Yeah, that's a tough three-game stretch because Oregon's in the top. 15, depending yes. on which poll you look yeah. at. Yeah, no, they they have brand... Uh, and they've got a lot to prove this and year. And, and nothing to take yeah. away from the Aggies, Irish, and, and Razorbacks. Notre Dame and Arkansas, also top 25 teams. But uh, but out of the gate to go there, here, and then then over to... You know, you've covered both coasts, and you've got a game in the middle in the mountains uh, against some quality teams. The exciting part on the first three is BYU's tends to, uh, at least in the last decade, be real ready for those first couple of and games. And real healthy. Fully healthy. Yeah. That's part of it. Like, I'm a little... It's coming out of those fully healthy that's been the problem. Yes. When you get to later in the schedule and you're playing game 5-6, I said 4-5-6, it's 5-6-7 and seven against Utah State and Notre Dame Arkansas. Who, who's still right. there, right? Is everyone still good? Well, when BYU played Baylor, they were banged up last year in a game where they, they couldn't run the football. They had, they had young linemen in playing for injured linemen. A couple of big mistakes made by those linemen led to hall fumbles and disastrous plays. Um, yeah, this, this September they'll be healthy when they, when they play Baylor. But to be a Baylor, you've got to be healthy in October and November. And I think that's why Kalani's so happy about the depth because that's been the issue at BYU. It's not been the start. It's not really been the middle. It's been the finish. And now that BYU is going to go into a league that's going to put them in big bowl games against P5 opponents, not bowl games that BYU's currently been in, you still have to have a team in December to go and compete and, and win those games in late December or January. That's where BYU has not been able to do it. And I think that's why Kalani's like, man, I like my guys. And one day, we hope BYU's in a New Year's Six game. Guess yeah. what? You have to have your best squad out in that game. Absolutely. Playing your best. That, yeah. <laughs> like, the Cotton Bowl isn't... Ah, uh, BYU was banged up and didn't show up. No, the best BYU team showed up in that game. Which you think about last great. year, and, and everyone was disappointed with the Independence Bowl. Um, and, and even, you know, had they gone to a P5, or a, no, a New Year's Six, had they got there, maybe at 10-2 and, and got over Michigan State or whatever, probably got killed 
you know, Oklahoma State or one of those teams. Jaren Hall probably plays. Ole Miss. Was banged we, up. We were banged up. Well, yeah. the quarterback didn't even play in the in the bowl game. Uh, and those guys weren't. And I was just like, maybe it's one of those tender mercies of go to, <laughs> go to the Independence Bowl and get healthy in the offseason for the love. There are bigger games ahead. All right, we've got some other stuff we want to hit with you. Let's talk some fall camp. What have been your early impressions of camp so far? What stood out to you? I like, I like that Kalani is, uh, is at peace with what's going on. He knows what product he has. He knows the depth we talked about. He's got a newborn at home. So uh, all of us who've had newborns at home know that, <laughs> that life is upside down and sideways. Uh, and in visiting with him um, the other day after practice, there's just a calmness about him. And he said he's, he's really happy with his team. He's really happy with how they are uh, further along in camp than they have been in the past because of the returning players. And um, there's, just a, there's just a vibe around him of, of he's in a good place. And if you could be in a good place in fall camp in front of this kind of schedule with a brand new baby at home, uh, more power to you. And I think that was oh, that's camp's what, the easy part that's when you get a newborn I, at home. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's what I've taken it. Timberly uh, is Wonder Woman, but I, that's what I've, I've taken is his demeanor, I think, then carries into the team. It certainly carries into the quarterback. You talk to him and there's a calmness about Jaron. You talk to Puka, there's a calmness about Puka. That doesn't mean they're, not, uh, they're fighting in the trenches and hitting when they shouldn't, you know, if you talk to the linemen. But there is a, there is a business, you know, we were there um, a couple days ago. It might have been yesterday. It feels like all one long day. It was yesterday, I think. Uh, maybe it was Monday. But there was a business feel coming off as opposed to opening day when it was high fives. And, yeah. and Jacob Conover said something funny. He said, you know, this is the week where you learn that your friends in the summer aren't your friends in the fall. <laughs> A.K. the defense. Yeah. And I thought, well said. Well said, because they're fighting it out over there. Kalani was on the golf course two days after his baby was born. So MVP <laughs> yeah. is Timberlake. And then he's, he, he's on that new contract, too. He's never made more money in his entire right. life. Kalani's This is a good, good time yeah. to have a veteran quarterback. And Meadow Line. <laughs> With all of those Brooks, things. And, those, yeah, and to have Pook good. out there yep, and to have Chris good. Brooks in here and then to look at that offensive line. Yep. Even though the defense, I think, is going to be one of the big stories of the, of the season. Yeah. It's a great time to be Kalani, and, and I think that adds to his aura of, hey. And, oh, by the way, they're in the Big 12 next oh, year. Oh, by the way. Oh, there's yep. just that fact. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Dave. We appreciate it, man. My pleasure. Have Thanks, a great Dave. day. All right, coming up, the Vodka Twins, BYU Women's Soccer, will join us. And will Puka Nakua be a 1,000-yard receiver this year? We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. My name is Spencer Finnegan, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships, I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. 
This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. Follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. How about that camera work? Have you ever noticed the airplane in the background with the hashtag BYUSN uh, you know, flag on the Only when we get good shots like that. How about that? You know, little, little nuggets inside the uh, screen there. Let's go. He is Jason. I am Jerem. Let's whip it. Cook Whip Round is presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Yesterday, BYU football tweeted out a video of a great throw and catch between Jaron Hall and Puka Nakua. Will Puka Nakua have 1,000 yards receiving this season? I've said this for a few months. Yes, I believe he will be a 1,000-yard receiver. Had 805 last year yep. in 12 games. He missed the Arizona game. Hamstring was an issue in fall camp. Great one-footed catch in practice. I believe he'll be a 1,000-yard guy and an NFL draft pick next year. I, I expect it. We yes. saw how good he was last year, and he's going to be even more of a focal point of this offense this season. Absolutely, he's going to get to 1,000 yards. He has not had uh, more than, I don't know, five, eight dudes like Puka Nakua in its history. Like, that physical, that uh, those hands, that ability, that route running, like, he is a special receiver for BYU. Yes, he is. I think he, honestly, when he's gone, he could very well leave as viewed as BYU's best receiver they've ever had. I don't believe that. I believe See, I, I think will he, stay there. I think he has but, the possibility. But Puka is going to be in that sphere. Okay. Yesterday, NFL teams, I think it's statistically based on that. Yesterday, NFL teams released uh, depth charts. What player and spot stuck out the most to you? It was probably seeing um, Tyler Algiers like running back seven, <laughs> only because we expected by it's all when it's all said and done for him to possibly be the starter of the Falcons. It's traditional that it the is. rookies get yes. listed last. But there. just to see that's it, it was why. like. But it was like, wait, we were told he'd be yeah. good, right? Yeah. So the that's Falcons. the one that really stood out to me. Yeah, absolutely. That's one for me too. I was like, uh, what? And then you kind of get the clarification: rookies are listed right. last. Sometimes. They don't want to give them any credit early on. Yeah. You want to give them a big head to start They're things like, out. You get paid the the least. Yeah. Yes. Quarterback. Okay. Uh, Malik Moore narrated an interception he had in practice yesterday, and it sounded like this. You know, on his hot day, slight work. Uh, you know, the backers dropped. They got to their depths, made the quarterback overthrow it. I just completed it what they started. You know what I mean? It's a team effort. It's a team sport. You know what I mean? I ain't do nothing but catch the ball, but I caught the ball. <laughs> a little smile at the end. He's also, he may be angling for like an analyst job too. That's Brought not bad. by Wingstop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Will Malik Moore lead the Cougars in interceptions again this season? Last year he had three. I mean, he's got great hands. Yes. Led with three last year. He tied with Jacob Robinson Correct. for three as well. Jacob Robinson now corner. Safety, the easiest spot to get picks traditionally. Don't overlook Peyton Wilgar who had three in 2019 and had two yes. last year as well. See, I, I, my initial was, uh, I kind of want to go with one of the linebackers, but but yes, I'm going to say he will. I'll say he'll lead it again. Okay, yesterday at the end of the show, I asked out loud how many times you always had two first-round picks in the same NFL draft. 1987 is the answer with Sean Knight and Jason Buck. What's the chance this happens next year in the NFL draft? For BYU? Look, there's already buzz in terms of these early, early NFL draft mock drafts. I think it's a a good chance. We, you want like a percentage? I don't know. Sure. I, I'm going to say 75% of their That team. high? I, I'm going to say 75%. Uh, if we're talking Jaron and Blake? Jaron Jaron and Blake. If they really? have the seasons that we expect them to have, I absolutely think it puts them in that situation. So I'll say 75% right now. There's a chance. Statistically, there's you know a website that categorizes, I can't remember the name of it, but they, they gather all the draft pick yes. thing, and they actually give it a percent. And right now it's like 8% or something for kind of each guy. So I'll, I'll say like, yeah, there's like a, Eight percent chance that eight BYU has two first round picks next year. It's why do you hate BYU? <laughs> I do. What? Uh, no, I don't hate BYU. They pay the bills. Look, I'm just I'm going off of what these mock drafts already say now. And if these players yeah. have the seasons that we know they're capable of and we expect them to have with this schedule, Jaren's got to play all 13 and play really well. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's that crazy. All right, New York Jets starting tackle Makai Becton suffered a most likely season-ending knee injury on Monday in practice. Reports yesterday that the offensive line really struggled in his absence in Jets practice. Does this change your expectations for Zach Wilson and the Jets? Honestly, it does a little bit because last year Makai Becton had a season-ending injury early in the year as well. That affected him. He's a tremendous yeah. left tackle, big-time draft pick a few years ago. 
this is tough because what the Jets have to do and Zach has to do is play well, but also they have to approximate the playoffs. And the next year, they have to actually make the playoffs where they may be done with Zach. If Zach has the year he had last year, this year, they may not have him be the starter again. So missing your stud left tackle like that is really hard. Yeah, it's it's a big, big deal. Look, I didn't ultimately from a wins-loss situation have much going on with the Jets this year anyway. I still I think they will be better. Like 7 and 10 would be Oh, if they get seven if the they get 7 wins, that's that's insane. I don't see him sniffing close to 7 this year. <laughs> like I maybe 5. Zach's going to have to maybe a lot five. In those losses. But but yeah, you can't lose a starting left tackle and 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 have and feel like, "Oh yeah, we're going to be fine with a position that already struggled with yeah. him, let alone without him." Pittsburgh Pirates infielder Rodolfo Castro slid in the third last night. His phone fell out of his pocket That's in the crazy. process. You know, what's the oddest thing you've seen in a baseball game? Obviously, they're not talking about in person. Just something from the – it's got to be Randy Johnson and the bird. Oh, just unbelievable that's, moment, That's right? still – now – Rest in peace to that bird. <laughs> that is still the, the weirdest feather. thing I have ever seen. <laughs> not – but. The astronomical timing that yeah. had, you know what Cosmic. I mean? If, if there's just no way that would have ever happened again, certainly. You wouldn't have thought it would happen the first time, so that's where I'm going. I'm not going to say the name of the player, but uh, during a BYU baseball game a couple of years ago, this player was was strong upper body. The jersey didn't fit. They had to switch mid mid uh, game, so the jersey fit. It happens. It's it happens. something something I don't know about, which is upper body strength. I have no clue about that. Okay. We do. All right. Uh, Ricky Cole is a defensive lineman from SMU, and he was a high school teammate of BYU sophomore offensive lineman Ben Ward. And Ricky tweeted the following. He says, I don't know how many people could go overseas for two years, come back way underweight, get asked to gain 50 to 60 pounds, and switch their position. At Ben, 34 Ward did all that without blink an eye. Nothing but respect for my brother. Jeremy, if you had to gain 50 to 60 pounds, 50 to 60, what would your diet consist of? Uh, a lot of the guys that have tried to gain weight over time uh, have, have talked about waking up in the middle of the night. You got the protein shakes, of course, but yes. like pounding peanut butter oh, yeah. and jelly. Sandwich. Oh yeah. Middle of the night, you wake up pounding though, so it'd probably be that. Okay, well first off, a lot off, of tucanos probably. Yeah. Well, as long as you go, it's a lot of protein. You got to mix in a lot of carbs. See, I, I've sworn off for the most part carbs uh, and. How'd you casual then? Par carbs and sugar. I would go all carbs, all sugar. I, I, I probably wouldn't take me very long. <laughs> 50 to 60 pounds. 50 to 60 is so If long. I eat as often as I normally do, but changed what I eat, it probably wouldn't take me that long. Mm, okay, so, good to know. All right, coming up, a rise and shout out to sportsmanship. And the Vodka Twins from the soccer team are live in studio. How's fall camp going for the third ranked team in the country? Alumni game tonight, North Carolina Saturday. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing. Excellent. Cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points. Gift card. Concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. This is your guys' song. You deserve our goal. 50,000 books in the hands of children. OK, and I can help. Why do you do this? What do you get out of this? It needs hope, and you need to show that little bit of love. When you lay down your head, 
People come here one way, and they change while they're here. It was so great to be a part of it. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Uh, it sounds great to say this. Number three women's soccer nice. faces North Carolina in Chapel Hill on Saturday. In exhibition play, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, will have the call on BYU Radio and the app 6 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Mountain Time. That's a massive exhibition. That's game. awesome. I mean, like, that's as good as it gets. That's that's an incredible opportunity. Coach for Rockwood BYU. is pumped to go to this and play this game. She's excited She'll, for this opportunity for the for the program. She's wearing the Zach Wilson headband. Any team time place this week. All right, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We now welcome to the program for the first time ever a set of twins. They are Daviana and Leveni Vaca of the women's soccer team. Welcome to the program. Great to have you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and thanks for sweet. setting the uh, the new record here for twins on the show. Okay, so <laughs> Daviana. Yeah. Laveni. Daviana, though. Daviana. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Minor detail for the people who call the games. Why didn't you tell me that? My bad. Okay. Let, let's talk about uh, this season. How's fall camp going right now? Let's start, start uh, It's you. great. It's, um, it's intense, but we're super excited. We have our first game this weekend, so we're all getting ready for that. And, yeah, everyone's been showing up. A lot of competition has been happening. Yeah, we're competing every day. It's been super exhausting. Like, the other day, we were practicing in the second session. Jen's, like, telling our trainer, Carolyn, she's like, it was so bad. Like, they must be exhausted because they could. the second drill just wasn't good. But we're, you know, that's expected for us to be exhausted if we're competing every day. But Well, Ruby uh, Laddick said uh, she ran 40 miles last week or that something. Was yeah. Before the blue and white scrimmage, huh? And that was before the scrimmage. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we probably yes. did more than that. So you guys are putting in how many miles a day? Five, Shoot. seven, oh, definitely. Yeah, like seven, nine, nine, nine yeah. a day. You guys track all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, we always try and track to see yeah. how much we do. You're basically on the cross-country team, but you also <laughs> have a soccer ball. Oh, yeah, like, that's like, a lot of running. Just run with a soccer ball, yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. So, okay, after last year and all the success that we saw last year, how do you take last year's experience into a new season? Because I know everybody wants, you know, last year's last year. We want to focus on this year. But I, I've got to imagine the experience that you guys took can really help you out this season. How do you do that? Um, so personally, like taking my experience, that was my like, you know, first breakout year, I guess you could say. Um, taking that experience and just carrying it over to the team, like especially helping with the back line and our new center back that's filling in the role for Grace Johnson. Just helping our back line out, just stay connected, helping the new incomers, like the freshmen, bringing them in. They were here in spring, and so it's nice that they were here in spring and just carry them over into fall. And just try and find a new identity besides last year's team. So we're constantly getting compared, and mm -hmm. that's our mission right now, is just finding our identity and our, being ourselves. Which is probably interesting because last year is the greatest team in BYU women's soccer history, yet yeah. your career's not over. Like if you're yeah. Kayla or Cam or Cassidy, you're like, yep, we were the greatest, we're done, we're yeah. out, right? <laughs> but you guys are still here. You have a legacy to continue, and you have the pressure of now you're ranked third. Hey, when you go 9-0-1-1 in spring, mm -hmm. people still think you're really good. So what's it like right now, uh, Daviana, Daviana, to uh, sort of be this new group and carve out your own identity, like you said? Um, like she said, we're really trying to find our identity and the new freshman class as well as me. Like, we all have new roles. I'm still trying to figure that out. Because you were a forward, you might be a <laughs> center back? Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, I was a forward. I am a defender now. I'm going back between center back and outside back. Um, the back line's still the same, so the experience is still there, and as well as the forwards, like we have Rachel McCarthy, Bella Felino, like all that experience is still there, just without Kayla and Cam. So we're all figuring that out, but we're going to do really good, I think, this year. How do you feel about the potential position switch? Because personally, oh, I'd love, love to see you back <laughs> no, there yeah, together. I love it. Like, Lava and I are really aggressive on the team, and I think um, I just like winning the ball more than scoring goals. That's my new thing now, but... Mm. Yeah. It, it would be super fun to have us playing together. Like in the blue and white game, it was nice to just communicate to each other. But at the same time, I'm like getting frustrated with her. I'm like yelling at her. That So like <laughs> like one of my goals like after like the game was like like just positive communication <laughs> to my sister because I'm more, like, you know, because she's my sister so I can yell at her, like yeah. be negative. Uh, just, yeah, like, I was going to say, what, yeah, how's that relationship? Yeah, let's, what's, let's get into that because sister's one thing. Twins, it's another level. What, oh, yeah. what's, the, what's the best part about having your sister on the team and, and the worst part? Oh, I feel like competing, just competing with each other, and then the worst would probably be 
just being able to be brutally honest. I know it's like super uncomfortable for our teammates. Yeah, to watch. Like, oh yeah, or like I'll be like, for no, your you teammates. Are, yeah. Are you like, guys comfortable? For them to watch. Oh yeah, oh, we're, yeah. Comfortable. we're comfortable. Yeah. You've been doing that your whole life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take I'll take like feedback from anyone else but her. Like it just <laughs> makes me so mad, and then I just can't respond well to her. So, but yeah. yeah. And who's, and like who's the oldest? Me. Okay. Yeah. By how many minutes? <laughs> like two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's a big two minutes, though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, so we didn't even know who was the oldest until senior year when we graduated. So yeah. my mom kept it Are a you secret. Serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh so my all gosh. my family kept it a secret. Like, who was the oldest? She always used to say, like, they just took us out at the same time. Both exactly. Like, she had a C section <laughs> yeah. and they lifted us up. And of course, we fell for it for 18 what? years. Yeah, yeah, 18 years. And then they did a reveal at our graduation party on who was the oldest, and so I always knew it was me. So it, yeah, I think a lot me. of people knew that. What was what was that like for you being? Uh, younger in that, I, was that disappointing? I mean, no, I I kind of knew I was the youngest because I was kind of more spoiled than her growing yeah. up. <laughs> Are my siblings always babied her? Yeah. So. Are you more of the leader type organizer? Yeah, more yeah. independent. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, we're talking to you, uh, Daviana and Leveni Vaca, uh, and you guys. You guys have nicknames too, yep. Lava, Lava, Davi, and yep. Davi. Yep. But Davi. not Davy. No, not Davy, because Davy sounds weird. Because it's like Davy Crocker <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Davi. <laughs> okay. So you you played the blue and white game, uh, two zero win for the white team. Mm -hmm. uh, you got an alumni game. You got North Carolina. What's this week and a half like as you guys get ready for the season? Um. Right now, it's just trying to figure out and figure out the rhythm right now, figuring out who's there, who's in center back, I guess, is kind of open right now and just getting The other center back's line. Yeah, yeah, the other not center yours. back. Not yours. Yeah. I hope not mine. <laughs> You're like, I've, I'm a returning starter. Like, we good? I don't think you have to worry about that. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we're just prepping. We are just learning how to build out of the back, just um, playing two touch, speed, tempo, and just going to goal. We need to get more shots, shots on frame, and so that's what we're working on towards North Carolina. So you guys had an opportunity, we want to make sure we talk about this, a really cool experience of playing with the Tonga National Team so in, in the follow. Nations Cup in Fiji last month. What was that experience like and to be able to experience it together? Yeah, it was super exciting. Um, we played against some really good teams. Uh, the soccer, we'll just say out there, is <laughs> super intense, aggressive. Like, it's crazy how aggressive they are overseas and here in the States. But it was a really cool experience. Um, we played with them in 2018. 18. Yeah, we were seniors in high school, so. Yeah. On the senior national team? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was able to score my first international at that time, and then you scored yours this past month. Yeah. And did you assist on that? Yeah. Yes, did. That? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it was a great experience. Um, like she said, they, their like, style is just being aggressive, playing super direct. You know, here we play like possession. keep possession and so that's kind of what we brought to the team and um, just more experience from I guess overseas they like to call us overseas players which is kind of special but shout out to fun. Juan Diego as well which yeah. is not overseas yeah. <laughs> it's in Salt Lake but yeah. yeah that's pretty cool well best of luck with everything tonight in the alumni game again if you want to go uh, you know free admission not not broadcast you got to show up but then at North Carolina on Saturday, you yeah. can listen to that. It's going to be best, awesome. Best yeah. of luck. Let's give you the BYU Sports Nation karma. You get good luck. Yeah. I want to see you at center back, <laughs> selfishly. So best of luck in that competition. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you guys. Yeah. All right, coming up, who gets the elite voice of the day? And today's rising shout out to some little league sportsmanship. This is BYU Sports Nation. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Let me tell you a story. The human eye is drawn to light. We can't help it, it just happens. How do you plead? 
for mercy. If you want to be inspired, you got to show up with the willingness to be inspired. It allows that searching part of me to kind of come forward. Pass call for Mallory Towers. And even when things don't go as planned, you can still have hope. I want to know that I've made a difference. Man, I'm so proud of you. It's like a medicine, almost. It's, it's powerful. You have to at least try. I just knew that it was season ending. A shot and a goal! Ellie Vaughn! My heart is so full. That's cool. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform and please subscribe, rate, and review. Milk and screen today. Let's go. All the nuances. Vodka Twins, so fun. They were great. Uh, Davi and Lava. Davi and Lava. We'll uh, check them out uh, this year on the pitch. Our question of the day. What's the biggest statement game on BYU's football schedule this season? Tanner Christensen on Twitter. One, Notre Dame. You beat arguably the biggest brand in college football. People will notice. Tied for two, Baylor and Arkansas beating the returning Big 12 champ and future conference foe would give BYU some momentum before going to the Big 12. Beating a rising SEC team would be huge, too. We don't actually care how good the SEC team is. Like, just, when BYU beat Ole Miss, we celebrated pretty hard on that. Just they were 2-10. and 10. Like, yes. just SEC, just, it doesn't matter. But Arkansas is good. They're top 25 preseason. Okay, our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Jim Roberts on Twitter. Stanford, because it will be win number 12. I like Blue it. Goggle Blue goggle alert. We don't even have the blue, blue goggles goggle on the alert. desk anymore. No, nope, we've gone uh, accessory free here. I have my invisible blue goggles on right now. They're basically, always they're on. They're basically tattooed. They're always on. Yeah. So, yes. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. All right, uh, this was a video that was going around yesterday. Uh, Little League game, great sportsmanship. Texas East versus Oklahoma. The Texas East pitcher, Caden Shelton, hit Oklahoma's Isaiah Jarvis in the head. Yeah. Certainly unintentional, but it really shook him. And so Jarvis, who was at first base, who got hit, could tell that the pitcher was really concerned about it. He left first base, walked to the pitcher's mound, kind of patting him on the shoulder, ultimately gave him a hug to let him know everything was fine and he was okay. An unbelievable show of sportsmanship. Awesome job. It was great because the pitcher was... He was, he was emotional. Yeah. Yeah. It really got to him that he had hit the kid in the head, yeah. hit him in the helmet. So. Yeah, and it popped his helmet off, um, and the batter was okay. Yeah, he was just uh, fine. So, yeah, that was, that was crazy. So, great sports trip. By the way, best of luck to Snow Canyon down in southern Utah. They are trying to become the first team from Utah ever to make the Little League World Series. Best of luck. Let's go. Our thanks to today's guests, Dave McCann, Leveni, and Daviana Vaca. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Rachel the Magnet Manning. What's up, Rach? We are in August, baby. Let's go. Go Cougs.